Yeah, Ja loves the woman. Ja loves the woman. Ja gave them a special, a special, very special grace. And Satan, uh, Satana, she knows that. You know, the devil, in other words, knows how much Ja loves the woman, how much Ja loves Eve and Eve's daughters. Um, that's why there is so much focus, particularly on the woman. You know, the old saying was that if you um, educate a woman, you you educate a nation, and if you educate a man, you educate an individual, because of the nature generally of um, males and the nature generally of women. And when we say generally, we are not speaking about today's Negroes, because there's nothing general about today's Negroes. Today's Negroes or black folks are the byproduct of generations of mind control programming, black people. This might surprise some folks, but it's not really a surprise to any of us who, has, who have really um, taken a good look at the situation, you know. Um, let's make a slave is just one, is one um, very important testimony of that fact. And I know that there's many of you all out there that don't really like to deal with this. It makes you upset, you know. You get upset when you read this. You need more prayer, you know. You need more prayer. You need to ask ask the God and Father of our black Lord and Savior, you know, to give you to give you the grace, you know, to give you the grace and and and, and the and the um spiritual strength in order to look at what has happened. Because that will open up your your eyes and that will open up your mind and your heart to be able to do something to make a difference you know, to make a real change, to make a real spiritual and a godly change. And when we say God, in this sense, we're speaking about the God and Father of our black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMoshiach. We're not speaking of the counterfeit. We're not speaking of antichrist. Um, this document here, like we said, is, is a very good testimony to what has gone on. And if you read this with a with a, um, with your heart and your mind in Christ, not in crisis, you understand, but in Christ. That means with that spiritual strength and grace, and with that with that m mind of of under and overstanding, you basically get to see that Satan targets the black woman. Satan is targeting the black woman in this particular document right here. Now, some of you all know this. Some of you all may have read this. Some of you all heard about this. There's a big controversy that some of the demoniacs and the agents are out there trying to say that, well, this, is, this was not really real. This is, you know, this is a fraud, so forth and so on. They're trying to liken it to the protocols of the learned elders of Zion, which is also another very interesting um, document. But that's a whole different matter because it says right here there's a there's a subsection on this and I think this all connects with what's going on in the music industry. Keyword industry, underline industry, what's going on in the music industry and this this go gal and go go girl and stripper and prostitute and the so called pseudo diva and the whore and the goddess and the and the the whoredom, um, the hoe and the bitch. And all of that, that's not, that's not woman's true nature. That's not the way the true God created the black woman. And therefore, if the true God did not create the black woman in that image, someone is trying to remake the image of our mothers, of our wives of our sisters of our daughters someone is someone's up to evil and we see the signs of it but many of us don't know these are signs we think is that's just what's going on now you know that's how they do it now no it's a conspiracy a spiritual conspiracy you understand and it's all a part of this breaking process you see the section right here 
me show you this. The breaking process, what's called the breaking process of the African woman. Mm -hmm. On one level, you see this is what has happened to Whitney Houston. Whitney Houston, in a sense, we can say that she was, um, she was broken. You understand? She was basically broken. And um, when she was of no more use for them, they shoot horses, don't they? You know? If you know that saying, then that basically explains what happened with uh, Whitney Houston. They felt that she could be more service to her, to them dead than alive. And she's just the, one of the most recent examples. I, I immediately think of Dorothy Dandridge. Uh, Dorothy Dandridge, I think that's her name. Um, I hope I'm pronouncing it correctly. Um, but she was an a actress of, I think, the 50s or so. I don't know if she lived into the 60s, but around the 50s or so. Did a couple of movies. One particular movie, I forget the name of it, but it was about um, um, slavery on a slave ship. It's a very interesting one. Um, you could, uh, excuse me, I forget the name of it right now. But um, look up Dorothy Dandridge, and you'll find that they should have a, maybe a Wikipedia page um, devoted to her. Um, but what happened to her as well? Because whenever you have those black women who might take those steps into those industries, like the music industry or like uh, show business or, or Hollywood especially, and they have certain talents and gifts that the studios and that, the, um, that, that they can use, and they don't go all the way, and they hold on to their morality. They hold on to what sense of right and wrong they have. Um, after making a deal, you understand, with the devil, it becomes a, a very dangerous and precarious situation, but once again, it's still a part of that breaking process of the African, of the black woman. And what we find so, so startling in this, and nobody's saying this, is when you look in this particular document right here, they say in straight and plain language that the black woman is an important part of their economics. Right here, it says, there's a note right here. It says, note, neither principles alone will suffice for good economics. All principles, okay, no, that's, what does it say right here? It says that the, the black woman is important to their economics. And, and, and it goes into that in some detail. All right, let's, Let's get, let's get to this section, because this is a brief document, but there's a lot that's contained in here. Here where it says the breaking process of the African, the breaking process of the African woman or the black woman, or we can say for our purposes the Negro, the Negro, um, African American or black woman in the West. Then take the female. It says then take the female, because it was first explaining, first you had to break the black man, and 400 plus years, of, of mine, of, of Satanistic, post-traumatic slavery, disorder, and mind control, and brutality, and repression, and oppression, and castration, and lyn lynching, castration physically, you understand, castration psychologically, castration spiritually, on all of those different levels has produced basically nowadays nowadays Negroes, but it says, then take the female, run a series of, of tests on her to see if she will submit to your desires willingly. I, I, I just think about some of those vids where they show um, Clive Davis and Whitney Houston, you know, and, you know, there's, there's some kind of, um, it's, it, it don't seem like, seem like 
you know, like some child abuse. When I when I look at those videos, it's like I see child abuse. Cause I see Whitney there still as a as a, as a young girl. You understand, a young black woman, and 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 there's this old like lecherous, this like you know, this old lecherous man, and and you know, there's probably more out there that will come out eventually. It all does come out, if not in the wash, then in the rinse. But they said first they run a series of tests on her test on her to see if she will submit to your desires willingly. That's why I think the Bodyguard movie, the Bodyguard movie was like a uh, part of that series of tests that was run on her. When you listen in to the interviews with Kevin Cosnut, he talks about that process. He gives away and he's given away a whole lot in that. Even at the funeral, he said some very strange, some very strange things, but it goes over most folks' heads. You know what I mean? Because they've been programmed to accept, you understand, what a, a white man like that might say as being like, if not God, then the brother of God, because they still are worshiping the image of the beast, the blonde hair, blue eyed Jesus or the Antichrist. It says, test her in every way because she is the most important factor for good economics. It was actually right here, not on the other page. It says, test her in every way because she is the most important factor for good economics. Now, what do we hear so often? That the economy is bad, that they have to do something to improve the economy. That means there is an, an increased attention on the black woman. This is one reason why they have a movie like The Help, you understand, The, the Maid or whatever, The Help. Um, and this is one of the reasons why you, you're seeing in the media this image. You understand? This, look at what the NAACP give image awards for. And then find out who's behind the NAA, the NAACP. Um, it says, if she shows any sign of resistance in submitting completely to your will, and remember, this is speaking to the white man or the white man who knows himself in this society. Because a lot of white men, a lot of white folks, they are kind of like, you know, they're like indentured servants, even in the white supremacy system. You know, they come down to the level of poor white trash. So they, you know, this is not speaking about them. In, in other words, you know, they haven't been given the memo. But those who control the society and those families and those industries that are the movers and shakers, the, the rich men of Babylon, the rich men of the earth, they understand this. If she shows any sign of resistance in submitting completely to your will, do not hesitate to use the bull whip. The what? The bull whip not the cow whip, but the bull whip on her to extract that last bit of bitch out of her. That last bit of bitch out of her. Do you over that? In other words, though physical, you know, what they call it, um, um, ab ab abuse is, is wrong, you know, and whether we were the perpetrators of it, or the victims of it is still wrong. But what you'll notice in the society that the white man can use physical force even against the black woman in this society, whether with a badge or without a badge or with authority or without authority, and get away with it while the black man is coming to a point where he cannot even raise his voice in righteous anger or indignation without being called an abuser. But here, white supremacy tells its agents that if she, the black woman, shows any sign of resistance and submitting completely to your will, do not hesitate to use the bull whip on her to extract the last bit of bitch, of biatch, out of her. Take care not to kill her, for in doing so, you spoil good economics. Wow. That is really powerful. So when you hear this foolish um, argument, discussion, or debate that comes up, how come black women are doing so much better than black men? Well, that's twofold right there. That's one, to encourage other black women to, to go down to Egypt, to come down, to, to, to enter the matrix, you know, go deeper into Babylon, and also to keep the black man in his 
place because that is psychological um, propaganda as well. Um, because the system is the reason. You understand? The first and foremost reason. And then the black man, then we must be responsible for ourselves. But first, we must know ourselves. And then we recognize what the system has done. And then we have to look at ourselves and then look to our God and King of Kings and become obedient and do his will. That's how we overcome. When in complete submission, they go on to say, she will train her offspring in the early years to submit to labor when they become of age. Understanding is the best thing. Therefore, we should go deep into this area of the subject matter concerning what we have produced here in this breaking process of the female nigger, this breaking process of the female nigger. We have reversed the relationships. You know, we, we talk about where's the black community and the black family going. You understand? Without even looking at how do we get here? How do we really get here? What are the, what are the forces and conditions that are in place um, physically, psychologically, or spiritually that hold us in this frozen psychological state? It says that they have reversed the relationships in her natural uncivilized state she would have a strong dependency on the uncivilized nigger male. You know, whenever you see in the media a black man and a black woman, and they may have their problems, but the black woman loves the black man, and that black man loves the black woman, they always think that it's crazy for that black woman to love that black man, especially if they, if, if they social stereotype or typecast him like he's ghetto or he is an uncivilized nigger male. And she would have limited protective tendency toward her independent male offspring and would raise the female offspring to be dependent like her. This is the language they use, but, you know, within the society of black people, this is what has sustained our civilizations in, in good times and in bad times for thousands of years. What, what, created, what created human society, you know? But to a lot of folks who have been programmed, this seems to be bad. Even if you read it to them today, they'll, they'll hear them and say, what's wrong with that? Nature had provided for this type of balance. Nature, notice that, not nurture, but nature. So this mind control, PTSD mind control, has actually interfered not just with our nurturing, but with our very nature. Now that is deep. You understand? That's one reason why the creation, the nature, has to be renewed. We reversed nature. They say that they reversed nature. Willie Lynch speaking for the, for the uh, demons, the, the, the Satans, say that they have reversed nature by burning and pulling one civilized nigga apart. Now, notice how they use uncivilized, civilized. But this, this is a nigga that basically is doing all the right things he's supposed to be doing. You understand? In the society, this is why you have occasionally these things come up, even about some black people in society who are civilized niggas. They're not, they're, they're not gangsters, drug dealers, or whatever. They're, they're doing the right thing, but, but they bring them down. You understand? I don't want to go into the Obama thing, but you can, you can still see that. We reverse nature by burning and pulling one civilized nigga apart and bullwhipping the other to the point of death, all in her presence, all so that she can see this. That's deep, too, because something goes on in, in, your, in your heart, your mind, your body, and even your genetics. By her being left alone, this, this alienation, you notice that, that they call being left alone is like al being alienated. So they're saying by her, the black woman being left alone, unprotected with the male image destroyed, the ordeal caused her to move from her psychological dependent state to a frozen, a frozen 
independent state. This is the, you, you know, this is what we say, that this has to be studied. You know, you can read through it, but just go through even one line like that and really think about the implications, what that's pointing to by the black woman being left alone, by the black woman being unprotected. We're not talking about just in our relationships, the ups and downs. And that. We're talking about this is something that's going on among black women for the past 400 plus years in this captivity. So she is, 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 is suffering this generation, this is a generational curse in that sense. So we as black males, we have to be, you know, not just sympathetic but empathetic because that woman is our mother, that woman is our sister, our daughter is our wife. That woman is very important in our God-given society, but the devil, Satan, and his human demon-possessed agents have done their worst to bring us down to this present state. And in ignorance, we keep ourselves in this, in this kind of a frozen, independent state. We're independent. I'm an independent, but we're frozen because we're not really making moves. Every other nation on the face of the earth is making moves, is looking at its future for its people and, and laying down um, 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 blood and, and treasure for it as well. But what are we doing? In this frozen psychological state of independence, this is what the black woman of this generation is going through. You understand? She's in a frozen psychological state of independence. She will raise her male and female offspring in reversal roles. That's deep because a lot of folks say, where do all this homosexuality come in the black community? You know, where did all these black men acting like they're black girls come from? Where did all these black lesbians come from? You know, the folks, folks ask that question. You know, it may not be so PC for the GBLT community, you understand, but it's basically a question that is fear, you understand, and logical to ask. Well, we have the very origin of it. You understand? This is the PTSD, you understand, um, mind control, generational curse of what happened then and because we want to deny that this is the reality. So when we look at this, then we can be, begin to, to renew ourselves. You understand? It's a gradual process, but it has to begin before it's too late. So in this frozen psychological state of independence, she will raise her male and female offspring in reversal roles. So the male will, will be um, bitchified and the female would almost be thugified. You know, the female, you know, will step to you. And this is what we see among black males and females, generally speaking. You understand? Depends on the individual and their socialization, their background, they express it a little bit differently. You understand? But when we go like ghetto, we can see it boldly and bluntly in ghetto. You know what I mean? Because there's no PC and none of that. You see it raw and real as it is. As Negroes come out the ghetto, then, you know, they start to go through these different filters. But when you put their back against the wall, you'll see, you'll see the nigga. The nigga will come out. You know, that's why even Marcus Garvey, they said, said that, you know, a black man don't know himself until his back is against the wall. And this is where it seems like it's going to come to for our lost sheep, that they're not going to, even the remnant, not going to know themselves until their back is against that proverbial wall. For of the fear of the young male's life, she will psychologically train him to be mentally weak because the black mother, being a descendant of this generational curse, you understand the Americas and Caribbean, the PTSD, post-traumatic slave disorders, that she will be afraid for her young, her young boy, her young, her young man, right, the young male's life. And what will she do? She'll, she will psychologically train him to be mentally weak, to be mentally weak and dependent but physically strong. Physically, this is where we have so much um, of this um, um, over attention to the outer. 
you know what I'm saying, to the outer in that sense. You know, a lot of the things on the outer level, outer signs and symbols of strength. You know, niggas going to the gym, so they're showing muscles, like, yeah, I'll knock you out. But the mind being mad weak, they will admit to crimes that they didn't commit and go to jail for, for almost life. You understand? Because, and you ask them, why did you admit to this? Because I was afraid. And maybe mama said, you know, you know mama said, said yes, yeah, knock, knock, mama said, knock you out. You understand? What have you got? What have you got in this situation? You've got the nigger woman out front and the nigger man behind and scared, behind and scared, or scar red, scarred red. This situation is the perfect situation for sound sleep. So when the white man talks about he's trying to get his economy together. We, we, we got to watch out. We, we, we got to be very careful when white men talk about he's... Now, a lot of us who still are morally deficient, you know, who haven't come to that, to that, to that moral repentance level, you know, we, we, we're like, like, we heard, I think, Oh Dirty Bastard and, and the next one talking about, like, you know, um, um, how the country was built on, on stealing and everything, and we're down with that. Yeah, we're down with that. So Bush, like, let up on us. So far. And a lot of niggas will have that mentality thinking that, oh, I'm fighting against evil, but I'm going to get even with e evil. I'm going to do the same evil things that evil did to me, and all that's going to make you is evil, you understand, and probably worse off than the first evil. That's why Christ said that it will be better for Sodom, you understand, Sodom and Gomorrah, in that time, you understand, then for some of these folks, because they already had Sodom and Gomorrah and Babylon as an example. You understand, they already had that as an example. So, my brothers and sisters, I got another section to this, but I'm going to give you this for, 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 for some of your homework for the disciples. Give this your homework, because there's a, there's a very shocking chapter where it, it seems that Jah is going to um, intercede in this situation. But in the interceding in this situation, you understand, and, and this is a, a judgment which is directed to the, to these divas. That's why when we saw what happened with Whitney, you know, we couldn't help but feel that this is a sign. Because Whitney Houston was the sign of her generation. You know what I mean? She's a, we didn't even notice it so much until, like, you know, we started watching some of these vids and they're talking about all that she did and going back and how long she'd been out doing stuff and hearing some of these tunes that I really didn't hear in maybe 10, 20 years, really. Or I didn't go out my way to hear them. And, and I heard these tunes and you begin to remember, oh, yeah. I remember that tune when I was in, when I was in um, college or that one when I was in high school or whatnot, and maybe even elementary, I, I, maybe not that far back she goes. But still, you know, we started to think on these things and everything, and, and we said, that's a whole generation right there. That's a whole generation. And she didn't really, you know, she, she died young, you know, 48, basically, you know, 40, 50. It's young, especially in the scheme of things, the potential of life you know, you know, was in this present time. It's not like in some parts of the world in other times where people didn't have clean, clean water and stuff like that, and, and, and they had all sort of diseases, and that they didn't know science that well. And, and uh, you know, I mean, but, but you're, you, know, you know, you're someone who, who is, is 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 beyond the level of the average people and you come from like a middle class background too you know you come from that NWACP background and it 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 shows us that that way is a failure you know it shows that 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 way is a failure that that Whitney yes she had talent god gave her grace but we think she lost that grace making too many deals with the devil in the devil's world. This might offend some of y'all because, 
some of y'all are immature, spiritually speaking, in this word. Because when you get to know this word, you'll know it's what our Father, the God and Father, Abba of Jesus Christos, what he thinks. And that's the only thing that really matters. That's the only thing that really matters. If, if this was more in her head and in her heart, she would have been able to overcome that. But unfortunately, she didn't. But she's a sign. She's a sign because it says right here, Woe to the wicked. It shall be ill with him, for the reward of his hand shall be given him. As for my people, children are their oppressors. You see what's going on right now? Where it's the children that are living in the houses of the parents, telling the parents what to do. But then when we put this all together, we can see how it got where, where it got. When people say, how did this happen? That means they're ignorant about what's been going on in their own time and even before their time. They've been selfishly living their selfish lives, not trying to see what is, what is life and what is the real purpose of life. They've been caught up in this game, you understand, in this, in this rat race, you know, wasting their lives in this rat race. But as for my people, children are their oppressors, and women rule over them. This is what we have with the, with, with the, with the diva and the goddess matrix. You understand? And, and the link with the Gogal and the Kogal link right there. That woman, it says rule over them. So where's the men? We said this before. We'll say this again. White men, white supremacy, the general rulers of this age right now, the culture in which the cultural um, perspective that we live in, they have ruined manhood. The white man has been a bitch. He has ruined manhood. He has caused these things to be, but then it serves him right in a sense because now what he has, you know, what he has sown, you understand, over in amongst us is growing up as weeds amongst himself, and he, he's not acquainted with this, this, this primitiveness. You know, that's all we're seeing right now is images and elements from a primitive time, from, from the infancy of humanity. We've gone back to the infancy of humanity. So it says, O oh my people, they which lead thee cause thee to err and destroy the way of thy paths. And that's speaking to the majority of the so-called nigger or negro or black churches. All the churches that do not teach the black peoples, you understand, especially in the Americas and the Caribbean, that they are the descendants of the lost sheep of the house of Israel, the Beta Israel, are operating illegally. Spiritually speaking, they are operating an illegal and false Jehovah worship. Basically, what they're operating is no different than a heathen, a heathen temple, you know, and, and we're seeing... We're seeing the failure of that and what John says right here, O oh, my people, they which lead thee cause thee to err and destroy the way of thy paths. I mean, how was a woman who grew up in the church, who got her voice as a gift of God, right, going to then use that form of music or, or that, that spiritual gift to promote the world to come out of it for a time and then to get reinserted in it and one doesn't think that judgment would come about. So whoever led her, you understand, you know, whatever, whatever social values, you know, that the nigger church is teaching is destroying them. The Lord standeth up to plead and stand up to judge the people. The Lord will enter into judgment with the ancients of his people. That means with the elders, because the elders, the older folks, should know better. Instead of seeing the youth and distancing themselves from the youth, you understand, and saying, um, how did the youth get so bad? You know, like they don't know how this all, uh, you, you know, how this all of a sudden, well, while they were sleeping, this must have happened. And the princes thereof, and the princes, the young men, for ye, for ye have eaten up the vineyard. And the vineyard, the spoil of the poor, is in your houses. You know, all these folks, 
that making billions of dollars for the system and their communities are not bettered by it. I'm talking about nigger folks because when white folks and Jewish folks, when they're making millions of dollars or billions of dollars, you know, they try to better their community. They try to better where they're from. It's, it's in most of those white folks, you understand, it's in most of their, their, um, their upbringings. Occasionally there's the poor white trash that spends it on drugs or, you know, a loose living and, and burns it all. You understand? But that is more or less the exception and not the rule. But the rule with black folks is that they get all this money and they selfishly waste it and don't, don't change nothing and improve anything. Not all black folks, but there's too many examples of that happening. And then you want to talk about these people are in heaven, right? What mean ye that ye beat my people to pieces and grind the faces of the poor, saith the Lord God of hosts? Now here's where the judgment comes in, where it says in verse 16, Isaiah chapter 3, verse 16, Moreover, the Lord saith, because the daughters of Zion are haughty, we could say are bitchy, and walk with stretched forth necks and wanton eyes. It's like these videos. Check out some of these uh, music industry, Illuminati, um, robotic, and all other kind of crazy psychedelic uh, metropolis kind of chick videos. They're walking with what? They're haughty. They walk with stretched forth necks and wanton eyes, walking and mincing as they go and making a tinkling with their feet. So you can see, you can, you, you, can, you can visualize all of this. So just check out the vids. Check out the Beyonce videos and the Ciara videos and even the, the later Whitney Houston videos too. Therefore, Adonai will smite with a scab the crown of the head of the daughters of Zion. You know the thing I found out? That a lot of the black women who've been like permanent up for years and doing a lot of strange things with their hair, they don't got no hair. You understand? A lot of them are bald, and that's what a wig thing is a big thing. You know, Wendy Williams, she brags because she says she still got her own hair, but even she reveals, as others reveal, that there's a lot of women who are bald. And you're seeing it right here. This is not a usual thing for, for a woman to get bald. You know what I mean? This is not a usual thing, but we think that this is what happens. It's not. But because people are living their lives contrary to life, that they're seeing such death. Therefore, Adonai will smite with a scab the crown of the head of the daughters of Zion. Yahweh will, will discover their secret parts. What do you know secret parts are? Their punis, their, their, their buttocks, their, their breastuses will, will, will strip them down, will make them spread eagle. That's what it says. We'll discover. It says the Lord will discover their secret parts. You see, you see, Jah is mature. Your past and your preacher is probably immature. That's why they haven't given you this word the way that, the way that it is. The Lord will discover their secret parts. What secret parts? Talking about woman. What secret parts do you think he means? You understand? And in the reality of this verse coming to life, how do you think it will look? Well, look around, look around. In that day, Adonai will take away the bravery of their tinkling ornaments about their feet and their calls and their round ties like the moon, the chains and the bracelets and the mufflers, the bonnets and the ornaments of the legs, the headbands and the tablets and the earrings, the rings and nose jewels. jewels. These, these women got a lot of bling bling. I mean, I mean, you talk about fashion. John's people, the daughters of Zion, they are stylish. I mean, even a lot of the sisters and the chicks with their fake hair and everything else, they spend a lot of them spend a lot of money on these bags and these bracelets and other sort of things. But Josh says, I'm going to take away all of that. You know, before it's all over, Josh says, I'm going to take away all of that.